Greetings. We'll give it until five after to see um, who shows up. All right. Hello. Greetings. Hi, Rich. Hi, Taylor. Meeting notes are in the Zoom chat. Does anyone have any topics for today? And add your name and any items to the agenda or say it out loud, add it to Zoom. Have you attended this call, Rich, in the past? Yes, I have. Occasionally when I don't have overlapping meetings. Understood. All right. Hey, Victor. Hi, Taylor. Good morning. morning all right <clears throat> mm, there we go let's see so october 10th we got a couple of weeks until KubeCon and Cloud Native Telco Day. Rich, are you going to be um, making it to either of those, the 
Plot Night of Taco Day co-located event or? I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it there in person. Uh, you know, I know Phil Clatty from uh, our group is going and speaking, but I don't know if I'm going to be there in person. All right. Well, if you are, um, please reach out. Of course, if you if you see it, we'll be at Cloud Night of Toco Day for the whole um, half day event. Reach out if you're going to make it and let Bill know. So, I'd like to meet up with y'all. Yep. What about one summit? In the fall in Seattle, are you all going to have any presence there? I need to check and I I might come up for that. Um, but uh, I don't know if we're going to have uh, who else is going to be there at one summit. OK, uh, we're planning on attending one summit and the LFN Developer Forum. We're going to have a workshop during the LFN Developer Testing Forum uh, for using the test suite and uh, focused on certification, trying to make it an interactive session where we can try to help work through any issues and maybe make improvements right there. And KubeCon EU, as long as there's no big events that stop it, we're planning on being there in Amsterdam. Um, we're looking for sponsors for the Cloud Native uh, Telco Day in Amsterdam. Um, we had a lot of feedback that would like to have a live stream, so we need to get some sponsors to be able to do that if there's interest. Let's see here. Does anyone have anything specific to go over? Otherwise, I'll jump into PRs and issues. No ish, no PRs. All right. I had a lot open for a long time. I guess it's okay to have no PRs. Okay, so this uh, do not run containers with privilege um, flag. That's one that I'm working on and we have a lot of content. So if there's anybody that's interested in the security best practices, this is probably one of the areas where you can look. I mean, there's a lot of other content out there. Uh, Kubernetes security at this point, it's picked up a lot, but we've done a lot of research around the least privileged ones. I'm going to just link to this. Yes, replace chip, whatever that means. So there's a lot of content in here um, going over least privilege related best practices and deviating for CNF development. And it links back to content that we have been also upstream into other areas, but it covers a lot of stuff down to low level things and the packet filtering and the higher level. This particular issue is, I would call it a higher level, but a pretty straightforward containers running with the privilege flag is what this one's about. And um, we've had it open for a while, so I want to try to get this through. There's tests already on it. I think we have uh, duplicate tests even across 
different upstream tools. <clears throat> um, we're, I think we're just running one at this point, but I think that one is a pretty well covered. Do this as the default. Taylor, I remember that one of the, um, no Roblox, but one of the points that, uh, especially with privilege, was related with uh, attaching with uh, uh, special devices like SRIOB or things like that. Mm -hmm. so are, are you covering that part in the document? I haven't read it, but um, I don't know if you have mentioned something like that or. Well, this document is covering a lot of different things. Um, I think for the the actual best practice write up for this one, which um, this one was assigned to me at least in Google Doc. I want to try to get it out. We we should mention that. Um, I I think that's a general thing as far as like the SRV. This you know we have some content around here for that. The this whole section about why it can be a problem that starts going into the higher level and then talking about specific things like SRV, why you would maybe want to do it. Are you, are you referring to it as like an exception or what are you thinking, Victor? No, 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 uh, at least like uh, I, I haven't read it. So probably I need to take a look and probably what you have is, is, is enough for clarifying those, those um, or how, how developers can uh, use it as an exception, maybe, or or another workarounds if they need to, if they are facing with this uh, particular requirement, how can they uh, use it? Or I don't know, like, but more likely, I need to, I read it. I need to read it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd be happy to chat with you about it. Um, work on this. I know you're working on the the networking best practice with multiple interfaces. Maybe we could have some working sessions to go through both of those. But the I've, we've started covering some of this as far as exceptions in different ways. The document that Ian put forward for um listing any exceptions to following best practices and the guidelines um, you know, so that you're communicating from a, someone creating CNFs and where they don't follow exceptions. And it could be ops teams integrations anytime you're not following and communicating that so that the, the people that are using those and managing them will understand where the exceptions are. So that's one side. Um, on the testing side, we've been thinking about it from how to validate best practices. And we have the concept of exceptionless, um, that's specifically around this. So if you're running privileged containers and other things, and you know that you need them. So, you know, one example is there's privileged containers, privileged pods that may be running already as far as uh, Kubernetes core pods, or you may have some other one that you're running that everyone knows and it's okay. So that I think is something that's gonna keep coming up. Um, we need to make sure that we're differentiating between an exception and what do we believe is the default. So uh, keep, I'm just saying that so that we keep putting it forward and don't say because we have an edge case or because sometimes there's reasons to go around doesn't invalidate having the best practice, which I, I know you're not saying, Victor. But if you have some time, maybe we can go over that together. Um, yep, sure. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Requirements for multi-interface 
I, you were working on this. Do you want to, is there anything new to speak to? Uh, no, basically I, ha I haven't received any uh, comments or feedback about these documents. So, so please <laughs> take a look and if you consider something that is missing or like, uh, it would be nice to expand it. All right. Rich, did you see this one? No, I've not looked at that one in depth yet. All right. So uh, Daniel Bernier from Bell Canada um, created this issue several months back to talk about the different aspects. So this is multiple interface, but you could also, I mean, I think it's important to think multiple interface or multiple connection network connections that are segmented. So there's different ways of, of solving the underlying problem and multiple interfaces would be one. So if you're going down the path of multiple interfaces, then how are you gonna do this in a cloud native way and what are the different aspects here? And um, Victor broke out one part of this, um, multiple interfaces. This is talking about you being more declarative as far as how you're implementing this. So using annotations. So he has a document here, which you can check out. It's linked into the issue to start the conversations about using annotations to communicate um, the networks need, the devices, um, the need for different devices and a bunch of different aspects. Okay. I'll look at it. I'll look into it and well, I'm gonna loop in a couple of people internally. Um, yeah, I think this is maybe the, the core thing to keep in mind with this particular part of that. So they, the issue itself, you know, if, if you're looking at this, and again, this was something that a CSP, um, yep. they, they're bringing forward to talk about. And this aspect is about trying to be neutral toward the CNI specific parts to make sure that you're more portable. So if you may be on, a, if you're wanting to be able to work with any of the different CNIs and especially move between cloud providers, I think is probably gonna be the bigger thing, which is what's being asked. Um, or I should at least say the a Kubernetes distribution where they may have multiple CNIs depending on where they're running. Um, I think one of the things similar to least privilege is trying to make sure a, a application can degrade gracefully. And this would go along with that, Victor. So if, if you have a, if you can support specific CNIs in your application, great, but if they don't have the CNI that you were expecting then being able to communicate like with the annotations, here's what I'd like. And then ideally the platform can say, okay, well, here's what we can provide. And so you can degrade from best possible case where you have very specific things for a, the CNI to a less specific. Anyways, we want feedback, and I think from the standpoint of creating, it's important, along with, you know, working with what's being requested from CSPs and the integrators. Okay, okay. All right. I, th I think some of these others are um, more documentation specific. 
Um, I don't think there's been any updates on this. Oh, Tom, what do you got here? Life cycle management problems, best practices? Yeah, <clears throat> um, sorry for being late. Um, this is something that's been sort of rum rumbling around internally for a little while. Um, so I think everyone kind of agrees on the, the, the target state for, um, for software lifecycle management in terms of making it more cloud native and rolling updates and so on. And I think the CNF test suite deals with that as well. Um, I, I just, I just, I, I don't know whether this is the right forum or not, and, and it's more of an open question of whether it's something we should discuss here or take to us somewhere else. Of where we have, um, in inverted commas, cloud native platform vendors supporting, let's say, the last or the latest three versions of Kubernetes, for which you know gives us a year of support. Um, we then have the matrix of what versions of Kubernetes do the software vendors support. And then we have the matrix of how capable and quickly can we upgrade one or other of those things and how automatable is that process and uh, you know, so on. So I think there's part, part of the problem we have anyway is about internal kind of acceptance testing and onboarding process but part of the problem is you know if it's taking um i don't know six months to upgrade a platform then basically we're going to be continuously upgrading a platform because of the the, the cadence of when things are supported and i i, I just wonder whether there needs to be something a bit more um, explicit written down as a best practice, as well as the things that are tested, like, you know, can your CNF do your rolling update in Kubernetes? Something writing down the, the kind of rationale, the, you know, how we should approach it so that, you know, when we get in a new version of a CNF or a new version of a bunch of CNFs, maybe from different vendors, the upgrading them in you know in a coordinated way isn't a huge operational headache. Um, it's a series of changes in Git <laughs> that are tested and then deployed to a production network. Um, so yeah, I I don't know whether this is the right forum or not, but I I thought I'd raise it and see what people thought really. I would think so. Um, if it gets down to implementing <clears throat> the platform and a, like suggestions or whatever, I don't. While we're not focusing on on that specifically, I don't think we should stop from writing up information that's you know related to what we're currently doing. And yeah, and, and it's not just about we, that, you know. It's you know, it's as an example, I won't name any vendors, but you know, we've got some applications where if you want to upgrade them, it's a redeployment activity instead of a a, a kind of rolling update approach. And I know, I know, we've got a test in the CNF test suite that tests can you do a rolling update, but I don't think we've got anything. Well, I've not seen anything that's been written down as a best practice yet to explain this is why that's the best way of dealing with updates as opposed to a, you know, redeploy the new version of your software and then tear down the old version all in one monolithic kind of approach. Yeah. No. It's both, it's both, I think. So the, I mean, the, the concept, I think you're referring to like the concept of a Kubernetes rolling update um, or the or the very generic term rolling update. Uh, yeah, both, both really, yeah. So I think one of the underlying pieces that people aren't um, 
that are not as far along is the importance of, of breaking the larger application or product or um, solution, whatever you want to say, the larger set of services in a, a like a large workload into the smaller microservices so that each of those can be yeah. redeployed and reconnect. Um, you know, one of the, the 5G core, a lot of the components that I've seen are dependent on a lot of pieces being up before they before you can bring up other pieces, like they have to be fully running, connected and talking. And if they're not, then other pieces will fail and you would have to redeploy everything. Yeah. And that type of, I, I think that's, it's the design and architecture that they're not running as smaller autonomous services. It doesn't mean that a, maybe a, an, a consumer of, outside of the CSP services may not be able to get their service. That's not the point. It's that each one of them comes to some type of ready state and says, Hey, I'm, I'm waiting for something to connect. And then I can move to the next state. And each one of them are autonomous. And that's their, the design is more procedural. I, even if you, you know, your language is object oriented or you talk about modularity. When you look at how it's run, it's a procedural set of services. Yeah. Nothing's going to move forward. And I think that's a lot of what's happening. So when you look at the rolling updates in Kubernetes, you actually will have new services, a, a pod come up that's a new version. And it's going to take over. The services will now point, and I'm talking Kubernetes services. So connections will be redirected to the new pod running the new version. And when you're talking about rollback and all the versioning, it has to do with redirecting your connections between different pods running different versions and that capability. So a lot of it has to do with architecture and design. And I, I think that's going to be an important part if we're going to bring people forward to support those sort of things. It's going to be understanding, you know, the importance of some of the architecture changes that are needed. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, I do um, think, Tom, this should all be documented and written up. We don't worry about if it's a perfect fit for, is this an application practice? We just yeah. start writing it up and then breaking things out. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll create an issue then for the first first bit, which is the kind of focus of it. And then I, I kind of agree, it's linked into so many other parts of the best practices that are needed. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure we have stuff that would be similar um, and we, you know, in the discussion area. Yeah, I'll have a look through. Yeah. Not, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not to say what you're doing specifically, Tom. I'm saying it's it's areas that are people may think is this relevant, but it's mm. it's relevant in that if if you have some area that overlaps, we don't want to stop it just because it doesn't. It's yeah. not fully in one side. Understood. All right, I think Rich dropped. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have a look and I'll create an issue. Sounds good. Start working on some text. There, for the, um, some of those tests that you were talking about that are related to the life cycle management and releases and stuff. There should be documentation in the test suite for those that could yeah. um, go along with whatever you write up. I think one of the areas would be 
let's see. Um, think rationale. So these would be shorter statements on things. See, mm -hmm. rolling grade, rolling down grade. Yeah. There we go. So these are some. And then there's, um, it, in the test suite specifically, it's broken out across different documents. But I think some of this would be related to what Shane and we could pull some of that into a document. And I feel like there may be something linked out of the discussions, like a Google Doc or something. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard the request for some of what you're wanting to write up many times <laughs> over uh -huh. the last, you know, couple of years. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it would be good to have have this written up. Yeah, well, I'll try and put some words down and see what we can get to. I would like to come back to yours set of questions also that's driving from the op sides. I still think that one's a good set of questions that could help drive some of this. So at least re uh, link to that. You, you know what I'm talking about, Tom? The, the, the spreadsheet that I shared a while back. Spreadsheet, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's related. I I mean, that that maybe directly like an ops question in general, but it can at least drive some thoughts around these yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll try and dig that out. It's been a while since I've looked at it. <laughs> All right. Maybe we get it. Let's see if it needs some touch ups. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else, y'all? Not for me. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Taylor. Cheers, bye. See you next week.